Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest in studio today is Dr. Gary Moak, author of Beat Depression to Stay Healthier and Live Longer, a guide for older adults and their families. And he's here to talk with us today about aging, depression in folks that are aging, not always simply because they're aging are they depressed and being depressed isn't necessarily associated with aging. Our guest in studio is a practicing geriatric psychiatrist with over 30 years experience treating older adults with a wide range of psychiatric and behavioral problems related Related, as I said, to aging. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Moak. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be on. Now, you are a, a practicing geriatric uh, psychiatrist, uh, past president of the American Association of Geriatric Psychiatry, and also the 2011 recipient of its Clinician of the Year Award, if I'm understanding that correctly. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Been doing this for 30 years. Is this what you were initially interested in when you went into uh, health care uh, as a psychiatrist or was psychiatry always your uh, your first choice? I was actually uh, interested in neurology as a medical student, mm. but uh, my interest really had to do with brain diseases and their impact on people's uh, mental experience and and uh, emotions and behavior. Mm. And I was fortunate to to have exposure to some training in psychiatry. Uh, with some pretty interesting patients and some pretty interesting teachers mm -hmm. and came to discover that psychiatry held much more interest for me mm -hmm. and would likely hold more interest over the course of what I hope would be a long and fruitful career. And then as I got into psychiatric training, I, uh, geriatrics really became much more interesting as well. Uh, geriatrics is a, a, a challenging area that's really at the intersection of neurology, which is what I'd been interested in originally, mm -hmm traditional psychiatry and primary care medicine because many of the mental health problems that affect older adults um, are seen among people that have been mentally healthy their entire lives and become psychiatrically ill for the first time mm -hmm. later in life due to uh, other illnesses associated with the aging process, uh, wear and tear on the brain that's just part of the aging process, mm -hmm. or in response to some of the stresses of, of, of growing older that they're not able to cope with because of changes in their health as a result of aging. Yeah. So a geriatric psychiatrist has to be a little bit of a neurologist, a psychiatrist, and a primary care doctor all at once, and, and uh, that really seemed like a, a challenging way to practice, and, and, and um, it's an area where um, patients often can't find geriatric specialists, so there was a, a, a crying need which existed then and unfortunately still exists now, so it seemed like a good opportunity to make, do some good. Why is it there such a need to, to delve into the depression as a major concern for the elderly? I mean, we, we hear about depression all the time in folks that are a lot, uh, a lot younger. To put it in perspective, so depression is really a very serious disabling and costly condition across the entire age span. And, and currently, the, the World Health Organization considers depression to be the second leading cause of disability worldwide. The depression, I don't yeah. think, is, severity of depression in general, I don't think is, is appreciated, and it can affect people of all ages. Generally speaking, it affects about 1 in 10 under the age of 65, but clinically significant depression may affect as many as, as 1 in 5, a full yeah. fifth. Of the, of the population over the age of 65. And for these folks, uh, it becomes a bigger challenge because uh, treating it becomes more complicated because of uh, age-related factors that people become uh, more sensitive to the, the side effects of medications. So treatment is, is a little bit more challenging. They take a lot more medications. They have many other health problems which impact um, the course of their depression. And, and which may be impacted by the depression, making the impact of the depression that much greater and, and, and more devastating. Uh, and the consequences can be much greater for older adults in terms of, of permanently disabling, uh, life-changing uh, effects of the depression. So the stakes are higher. Now, with those higher stakes, um, how often in, in your experience is depression misdiagnosed as something else, maybe Alzheimer's or, or dementia, when it's, you know, not simply depression, but something other than Alzheimer's or uh, dementia is actually severe depression? How often is that misdiagnosed and taken for something else? Well, that's, a, that's really a, a very good question and a critical one because it's, it's a big part of the problem in terms of what keeps older adults from getting effective treatment. 
the problem with depression is we use that as a, as a term to describe a single problem, but clinically significant depression is not one problem. It's, it's, a, it's a family of illnesses in the same way that arthritis is a family of illnesses, and there, there are different kinds of arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But there are really different forms of depression, and they all may require different forms of treatment. There are also a number of masqueraders, which I, I cover um, in detail in one chapter in my book. There are a number of conditions that uh, can appear to be depression but really are not. Um, they include things like apathy, which is a condition often seen in people that have had a stroke uh, that can look like depression but really isn't. There's a condition called pseudobulbar affect in which people appear sad and even cry but don't feel sad or depressed inside and don't have depression. People with sleep apnea, which may affect 30% of older adults, can cause people to have a kind of sluggish, unmotivated, unenergetic, apathetic presentation during the day and a tendency to become withdrawn from activities, which may make others think they have depression. Mm -hmm. And then there are conditions like Parkinson's disease, certain kinds of stroke conditions, and dementing illnesses like Alzheimer's that may initially appear to be depression, but are, but are not. And to make it even more confusing, conditions like Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and, and Parkinson's disease uh, often can get complicated by depression. So people can have both at the same time, and it takes a lot of expertise to sort out which symptoms are coming from which and what are the right treatments to address them. You know, there is so much talk uh, about geriatric care, not just uh, on, on a physical, but uh, but as you say, the mental uh, aspect of geriatric care as well. Now, in your new book, Beat Depression to Stay Healthier and Live Longer, a guide for older adults and their families, what type of uh, suggestions uh, do you offer as hope for some of these older adults and their families as they deal with aging themselves or the aging of a loved one? So there are many. And, um, and they can be kind of complicated. And, uh, but the most important, uh, place to start is in terms of attitude. And it means that, that patients and members of their families need to not be hopeless and, and not assume that there's nothing that can be done, which all too often is the case. Patients I've treated over the years and in fact members of their family, um, assume that when an older adult has become seriously depressed, that that's just what happens to you when you get older, that it's it's something that should be expected, that there's nothing you can do about it, and it's just par for the course, so one has to just live with it and and and, and basically face the consequences of aging. And uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, certainly while not all health problems, physical or, or, or mental, mm-hmm. can necessarily be cured as people get older, Usually something can be done that's helpful, and when it comes to depression, uh, we can often do things that are remarkably helpful, and I've seen patients who thought their lives were over get their lives back again as a result of effective treatment, and then go on and, and, and live uh, live many very happy, uh, enjoyable, and productive years longer. So uh, the, the most important thing is not to get discouraged. You know, you've been doing this for 30 years. When did you decide to become an author, and you know why did you write the book? What type of reception have you gotten from other physicians as they delve into your new book? Uh, people are very positive. Um, they, they they tell me that it's very very uh, accessible and, and readable for for not only themselves but um, the lay people that have looked at it have been have had similar comments. But my experience since since um, the early part of my career was that successful treatment of depression in older adults really depended on helping them and members of their family understand the depression, understand where it was coming from, understand what could be done about it, understand the treatment, and, and especially understanding what to expect from the treatment and what the, the pitfalls might be along the way. And I, I found that when people understand what, what's, in, what's involved and what's going on and what the treatment will, will, will take, they're uh, they're able to work with uh, the clinicians effectively, and they they're able to hang in there and get the treatment they need and get better. So I've been, I've spent 30 years basically uh, talking with patients and their families, having conversations that ended up becoming the content of this book. I basically wrote it based on on my experience talking with patients and their families over 30 years, answering the kind of questions that come up and that they have, and providing the information that I, I found they find the most helpful and. Because the majority of older adults with depression 
are not going to have access to a, a geriatric psychiatrist or other mental health professional with a specialized training in geriatrics. And because this information is so important for people to have, I, I, I thought writing the book would be a good thing to do. Great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest in studio today has been Dr. Gary Moak, geriatric psychiatrist with over 30 years' experience treating older adults with a wide range of psychiatric and behavioral problems related to diseases of aging. He's past president of the American Association for Geriatric Psychiatry and the 2011 recipient of that organization's Clinician of the Year Award. And he's been here with us discussing his new book, Beat Depression to Stay Healthier and Live Longer, a guide for older adults and their families as the onset of depression late in life is often assumed by individuals and families to be, well, just a natural consequence. Our guest, Dr. Gary Moak, says this is a misunderstanding with potentially tragic consequences as depression, correctly diagnosed, is one of the most treatable of mental illnesses. It's been a pleasure having you here with us today, Dr. Moak. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.